After working on the weights for the arm and chest area, things are starting to look much better. There are still areas that we can improve, but the results are not as horrendous as they were. You can support CG Dive by purchasing this course or some of the exclusive courses on academy.cgdive.com. Subscription is also available. So one uh, thing that I want to improve is this pose here when the ogre bends his arm. I want more natural interaction between the upper arm and the lower arm as they press against each other. And here is the other thing that I want to improve. The pecs are a large muscle that is connected to the chest, like this. And then it also connects into the upper arm. And there is another part of this same muscle which is connected to the clavicle and also connects to the same part of the upper arm. I did try a lot of different uh, ways to simulate the behavior of the pec muscles and now I'm going to give you my solution. And that solution is to simplify things because in this series I'm not really trying to create a uh, sophisticated, complicated muscle system. I'm just trying to keep things as simple as possible while solving some of the most important and most obvious issues. So in the solution that I chose, I focus on this part of the pectoral muscle and maybe a little bit downwards towards the um, nipple. This area is the area that moves the most. The rest over here is attached to the chest and it sits on top of the chest and it doesn't move as much, but this area does move quite a bit. And so the solution is to add one so-called muscle bone from the uh, clavicle to the upper arm and one more similar muscle bone, in quotes, for the side of the pecs. And they'll connect to the upper arm. So let's unhide the meta rig, select it, and go to edit mode. Now I'm going to select the end of the clavicle. Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A to create a new bone um, with individual origins, make it smaller. Then I'm going to uh, place the 3D cursor over here, select this end of this new bone and Shift S, selection to cursor. And this bone that I just created will become my muscle bone. I'm going to move it more towards the actual bone and make it a little bit shorter like this. Then just shift T, duplicate it, set the cursor at the tail of this bone, and then select the tail of the other new bone and shift this selection to a cursor. And then I'll put the cursor over here and set the head of this bone to this position. I want to move these bones a little bit deeper under the skin. Okay, I want to make sure that these two tails are at the same position. So I'm going to hide the upper arm, select both of these bones, switch to bounding box, press S to scale and then zero on the numpad to snap them both to the same position. Now I'm going to set the cursor to this position, shift this, cursor to select it, shift A to create a new bone, individual origins and scale it down. And this will be my tweak bone that will actually move the um, muscle bones. Again, I duplicated this tweak bone and then I'll set the cursor to this position and then snap this new bone to the cursor and do the same one more time for this head of the bone. Now I'm going to set up my simple uh, muscles as I explained in the previous video. I'm going to parent this muscle bone to this tweak bone with keep offset. Same here, keep offset. And then I'm going to constrain this muscle bone to this um, tweak bone. And I'm going to use damp track and stretch two. Same for the other one. And now these uh, bones move the muscles. 
Okay, now I want to go to edit mode, unhide my upper arm, and now I want to parent these twig bones in a way that is logical. This twig bone should be parented to the upper arm, because that's what it connects to. This one should be parented to the spine that is closest to, to its um, position. So if I look from the front view, it's really right in the middle between two bones. So I'm not quite sure which one uh, I should choose. I'm just going to go for the last bone of the spine. Control P, keep offset. And this one will be parented to the collarbone because that's what happens in reality. Okay, now if I select the upper arm and move it, you'll see how the bones move with it and these muscles kind of stretch and squash with it. So this will be the basis for my muscle. When I try to, to rotate this bone, I see that this pec will probably move too much uh, with it, so I'm going to reparent it to the lower spine bone. Hmm. I think this will give me uh, a more logical behavior, maybe. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but I will check. So I'm going to rename this bone pec.b for bottom.l and this one pec.upper.l. And these bones So I'm going to use battery name and name them pec tweak.l And these bones need to be deformation bones. So I need to add the def prefix to them. The tweak bones on the other hand, I could just make them MCH or uh, mechanism bones. But for now, I'm going to keep them without any prefix, and that will allow me to also manipulate them right in the rig. Okay, now I want to symmetrize my bones. Select all bones, armature symmetrize, and then if I try to manipulate the arm on the other side, it seems to work well. Let's uh, get out of local mode, and then I can just unhide the generated rig and click generate rig. Hide the meta rig. Addons.cgdive.com organizes Blender resources so that you can easily find the exact tool you need. And here is an important part of the workflow. I just added new deformation bones to this armature. In order to include them, I need to parent again. And if I use automatic weights, that will undo all of the weight painting that we just did in the last video, and I don't want that. So instead of automatic weights, I'll just use empty groups. And this may not be uh, obvious, uh, you may think that choosing this option will delete all groups, but that's not what happens. If there are weights already, they won't be affected. And for any deformation bones that do not yet have any groups, new empty groups will be created. So that is a perfect, that is exactly what we want here. As I'm talking though, I uh, realized that I forgot to set the raw copy rig type, so these uh, muscle bones were not generated. So let's go back to the meta rig. Let's hide the collarbone and the upper arm bone. Now I can easily select all of these muscle bones. And then I'm going to use my uh, make raw copy script, which uh, you'll also have included in this scene, and uh, there'll be other ways to access the script. Just click the play button, and then check the rig type, and it's raw copy for all of these bones. Okay, Alt H to unhide my bones and generate the rig. Alright, and now I can parent with empty groups, for the reason that I just explained in the, uh, a second ago. Now I'm going to show the layer 29, shift click the character and go to weight paint mode. Now you can see that the character has weights and these are the weights that we already painted. If I switch my... Wait, um, okay, I need to properly 
go to object mode and select this generate this rig and then apply the uh, action if i play it you'll see that all of the things that we did uh, in the previous chapter the weights are have been preserved and now shift select the character and go to weight paint mode and now if i click this new deformation bone that i added the whole mesh is uh, blue because it doesn't have any weights applied to it but as soon as i start uh, painting positive weights uh, this bone will be considered as part of the armature so here i have uh, the draw brush, blend to mix, weight to 1, strength to something low like 0 0.15, auto normalize is on and X mirror is on, symmetry is off and everything else is at default. And now if I just click in this area, I'll add this new bone to my armature. And thanks to auto normalize, these weights that I just painted will be subtracted from the groups where they were originally. And thanks to X mirror, I only need to paint one part of the mesh. Okay, so now I'm going to scrub and find places where um, the deformations are not nice. So I'm going to select this new bone and try to paint some weights and see if I can get something that looks nicer. I probably uh, went too far with it, but we'll see. Here the deltoids area, the shoulder, is very close to the pecs, so it's hard to paint in a way that is clean. So I'm going to scrub back again and find this uh, pose and then try to paint a bit. So I think this uh, lower part of the pec should definitely affect a lot of this area. So I'm going to paint it not quite red, but quite strongly. Here I think I painted too much of the deltoid uh, on, on the new muscle bone, so I'm going to select this upper arm bone and paint some positive weights in this area again. And then let's scrub and find this place and uh, here I probably need to blur a little bit. Now I'm painting more in the uh, pec area. Just going back and forth between these three bones in this area then i switch overlays off so that i can see things better and paint a little bit then i switch to blur often and blur a little bit that's the whole process and then i just do it over and over until i get results that are better than what i had uh, before also let me remind you that i have uh, set a shortcut for the, the draw brush and blur brush a d is draw and b is blur so I can very quickly switch between them, but just keep an eye on the tools and you'll know which tool I'm using. So here I switch to draw brush and now to blur. Draw, blur, draw, blur, draw. Now I'm blurring. And I think I like what I'm seeing. I'm seeing less pinching in this area. This is also better in my opinion draw trying to add more influence in this area for the pec muscle but it seems that it's not having the effect that i want so i'm switching to to this bone and giving it more strength in that area and yeah i think that that's better let's blur just a little bit and i think that's getting much better it could be improved even more, but it's better than what we had in the previous video. What I don't like here is that these arms are really flattening. So let's see if I can improve that by painting some weights. It seems that I need to make this first bone of the upper arm influence this area more strongly and then i'm going to blur it because i did get some weird artifacts
as always I'm just painting some weights and then when I feel I went too far I switch to the blur brush and blur a little bit Now I made the end of the spine affect a little bit of the base of the arm and then I'm going to blur again a little bit. Now I'm trying to, again, bring more influence into the deltoid for this base of the arm bone. I think that will create more volume in this area. Let's blur a little bit. And yeah, this uh, did get a little bit better, although certainly this can be improved. But uh, this is not the focus of this video. The focus was this area and I think we definitely improved it. I just tried painting some more in this back area and I think this is as good as it gets using weight painting and the bones that we currently have. Okay, I kept uh, painting and blurring a little bit more in this area, but I think I'll stop here with the painting and I'll think of other ways to improve this area. That's it for this chapter. Please like, subscribe and check out our other projects academy.cgdive.com and addons.cgdive.com